My name is Rina Lopez Bautista. I am 52 years old and a mother of two, 25-year-old son and a 10-year-old daughter. I am the head of the Knowledge Channel Foundation, a nonprofit organization in the Philippines I founded in 1999. The past 13 years has been an unfolding journey that has surprised and continues to surprise me. Growing up, I studied in one of the more elite, private, all-girls school in the Philippines. Being run by nuns, we were exposed to poverty and mission work. Like many of my classmates, I grew up wanting to help others, but did not really know how to do so. Like many of my classmates, I also took my education for granted, and I was an average student. And so, when as a senior high school student, I took the National Collegiate Entrance Exam, and I got a 99 percentile. I was surprised. I asked myself, how could I, an average student, get a higher score than 99% of the examinees? And it was only much, much later, after a few years of working at Knowledge Channel, that I realized the significance of that score. I realized I was among the more, the more fortunate to have a better education, better nutrition, better sleep, a better everything. And all of this contributed to that 99 percentile score. Little by little, I realized, although I thought of myself as ordinary, average, and with no special talents, there was much I could do to share with others. And my two children have contributed much to why I do what I do. My hope is that the Philippines and the world of their future will be more peaceful, more just, and filled with a more educated populace. My work experience in our cable company gave me an idea of what business resources were available to help others. My work with the Home Shopping Channel made me solidify my desire to help others. I needed more reason to get up in the morning. And so in 1999, after much brainstorming and self-doubts, I set up the Knowledge Channel Foundation as a nonprofit organization. We created an educational TV channel that would supplement the learning in public schools, especially in areas where there is a lack of teachers, a lack of learning materials, and a lack of hope. Our mission is to empower Filipinos through education and help build a better world. With the work that we do, to help, we hope to help learners be globally competitive with empathy, integrity, and confidence. We help learners such that they will be able to lift themselves, their families, and their communities out of intergenerational poverty. When we started the Knowledge Channel, it was primarily to support students in formal public schools through TV. Today, we support the learners and the teachers in the formal and alternative learning systems on TV, online, and on demand. Just to give you an idea of our journey, we started with being in 300 public schools with 800,000 students. Today, we are in at least 2,500 schools and reaching 3 million students a year. Just an illustration of what we do to reinvigorate education in public schools. We work with the K-12 system and support them on air and online. We work with the alternative learning system as well, providing content and gadgets for the mobile teachers to reach the learners wherever they may be. We also provide teacher training workshops um, and teacher training for effectiveness on air, online, and on demand. We also work um, to provide content to the daycare systems around the country. Thirteen years later, we have seen that regular use of the Knowledge Channel increases educational outcomes. We have seen an increase of 2 to 3 percent in national achievement test scores, in enrollment and completion rates, and a decrease in dropout rates. 
we have also seen a more equal learning field and a fostering of interaction with parents and other community members. But how do we do all of that? We don't do it alone. We work with others. We collaborate to achieve our vision. As we produce content, and as we provide this to schools and to mobile teachers all over the country. I would like to share a story with you. This is Hill Marie. We met her when she was grade five. She walked to school an hour a day with her siblings. Many times, she would miss lessons because of her walk to school or her chores. One day, she took a test which she could answer because she had watched the programs on Knowledge Channel. She said she wanted to be a lawyer. We asked her why, and she said so that she could protect the rights of her family and her community. This is Hill Marie today, a law student. This is what we believe we can do, empower learners like Hill Marie. I'd like to share with you what I know today to be true because of the work that we have been doing over the years. When we provide education, we, we know that we empower, just as we empowered Hill Marie. When we bring education to conflict areas, we build peace. In many areas where we install the knowledge channel, the parents and the teachers they tell me, thank you. I tell them I, I just bring a TV, a satellite. They tell me, no ma'am, what you bring to us is love and what you bring to us is hope. Thank you. Um, well, I just... Uh, I'd like to say thank you again to all of you for being here. And if there are any, any questions, um, and uh, entertain some questions. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Deng Yai. I come I'm from Daniel. South Sudan. I'm the Under Secretary of the Ministry of General Education. Um, we are thinking of developing uh, uh, learning resources that can be uh, uh, passed to the learners. Uh, via the media. What was the biggest challenge you had to overcome? Well, uh, um, for one, 13 years ago, it was a mindset. Many times um, when we ask um, teachers and parents to watch the Knowledge Channel, they would, it, it was a mindset that said um, children should just watch TV only during weekends or after school. But we say, no, th th this is educational already. You know? So, but today, um, because children are very used to just watching, um, well, TV and uh, the computers, um, they're, they are a lot more open to it. No? So, uh, it's not too much of a challenge anymore, I think. No? Um, I guess the infrastructure um, that you would have to put into the schools, um, whether it's uh, the TV, broadband, or the computers, no? um, but, and electricity. No? Um, but these are the things that we tried to work around. Um, we worked with um, whatever we had with the cable TV companies. We partnered with more than 100 cable TV companies around the, uh, around the country. Um, and where there was no cable, we installed a satellite dish. Um, so that uh, the schools could receive the channel. And where there was no satellite or electricity, we partnered with organizations to install renewable energy like solar panels. No? Um, but really being, trying as much as we could to work with whatever infrastructure there was in, in the areas. No? So while the mobile teachers that go into the, 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 the mountains or the islands or wherever, um, do not have um, a fixed uh, learning space, we provide them with the netbooks, you know, with the preloaded content. So um, it's really trying to work with, with, with whatever we can. And I guess um, uh, because this is also a private 
our, our organization. Um, it was also the funding. Um, we started with um, the resources that we had. We leveraged it and harnessed. And um, it was um, looking for whatever funding we could to be able to provide content, continuously update it, and um, to connect the schools um, and the learning spaces no, um, where we could. Um, but yeah, but we'd be um, very honored to, to help you out with that as well. My name is Fasri Jala from Indonesia. Yes. How do you uh, time the program to be responsive to the school time? Because you have a different time zone and different level of education. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what we did was we uh, went to the Department of Education because it follows the Department of Education curriculum. Um, we asked them what's the, the budget of work, the scheduling, and all of that, and they gave it to us. Um, and so we programmed the, uh, the channel in that way, but uh, we later realized that many of the schools um, would have really a different. Uh, uh, schedule. Um, so what we did was we would um, replay each of the shows two to three times uh, or even four times a week on different days and on different time slots. Because sometimes we would, we would have even two or three shifts in a school no? and sometimes about 30 or 40 sections in a year level. So um, today what we're doing is aside from um, replaying these shows on different time slots. Um, we're trying to really uh, connect all the classrooms no, um, in a school so that they can watch it anytime they want. And now we've developed also um, a way for them to watch it at any time. So, it's, so aside from having it live and online, um, we provide them with like a netbook with a preloaded content. Um, so that they can watch it uh, anytime, you know, on demand. Um, Good afternoon. My name is Laurent Pellegrin. I'm leading a small company for doing exactly the same, but using a push vote technology. So it's on demand education okay. for all the rural areas because yes. you don't need to be connected to internet. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to right. to, to down. To, to download, download yes. but you will broadcast through yes. the satellite into the set top boxes then okay. you have your on-demand education with a user interface so it's a, a mix between the on-demand but without connection so i think it's a solution also for 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 you and and to complete your mm -hmm. extraordinary job <laughs> thank you and congratulations to you too maybe we can talk later I'm Angela Little from the University of London. Hello, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit more about the funding of the program. Uh -huh. um, from what I've heard, you, you, you say that you've, that you've raised funds from various sources that help you to develop the material. Mm -hmm. But do you, have, um, do you have some sort of financial contract with the Ministry of Education? Or can you just tell us what your funding model looks like? Because it's very exciting. <sighs> Thank you. We're actually developing that the model now we started it, it, it is really it's continuously evolving we started off um, really just trying to say um, our, telling our cable companies can you just please connect the schools no and then for um, the schools uh, because we didn't really want it to be a dole out we asked the schools please provide the TV sets and everything else we'll look for funding for the teacher training workshops and all of that no? But it didn't work that way. Um, we realized that we would have to really um, come up with a whole package you know, um, that included the infrastructure, the TV set, um, the, uh, the training, the channel guides, and you know, monitoring and evaluation as well. You know? And we would go, we go to, sp to sponsors, to donors, whether it's um, private or public. You know? um, organizations or individuals, families, um, for them to um, help us with content um, and to connect the schools. No? Um, but we're coming up, uh, we hope to come up with, with a more, um, I guess, robust <laughs> um, business model, um, wherein um, 
together with the uh, Department of Education, no? um, because this is really for them uh, no, uh, as a beneficiary, um, to come up with uh, a, a campaign for us to really um, work together uh, with them and with other stakeholders around the country and internationally you know, to be able to, uh, to accomplish our vision. Um, basically, that's uh, how we go about doing that. Yeah. I'm Antoinette from Stellenbosch University in South Africa. Yes. And I'm also heading up a broadcast studio similar to yours. And we use it at the university primarily for postgraduate students, but we also have programs running in schools um, to provide learners and teachers like your program. I was just wondering about the interaction during the broadcast. Are the learners and teachers able to ask questions? Because what we found in South Africa, we're using cell phone and web-based technology to actually create that interaction mm -hmm. where they can actually ask questions and get direct comments and feedback from the presenters. Yes. Um, what we do is um, when we train the teachers, we actually used to train just uh, two or three of the teachers in a school. No? Um, but Again, another learning was that uh, we needed to train many more teachers for them to really use it and use it properly. And so um, we, when we train the teachers, we, we, we train them to do pre-viewing uh, pre activities and post-viewing activities so that the learning becomes really deeper. But it's also using um, online, if that is available, really for a deeper, deeper understanding. But is that mindset of Hilton that you're talking about? Are, are, do you work with mindset? No. Another one. I see. Okay. Thank you very much um, for being here with me.